Go ahead. Top five. So speaking of the draft, like Terry Fontenot, the reason why I think the Falcons is going to surprise a lot of people is because Terry Fontenot knocked this draft out of the park. Okay. If you've seen them grade this draft, they're like at an A freaking, they're getting, they're the only, one of the only teams that got an A plus. And then our undrafted is players. this across multiple outlets? Across giving... multiple outlets, yeah. There's a lot of – there's some outlets that gave everybody an A and a B, but the Falcons got an A+. Plus. And there's a lot of – that. first of all, um, Kyle Pitts is a generational player, right? He's going to be with the – he's going to be in Atlanta for a good 12 years. Um, Grant, the second draft uh, choice um, – I'm trying to find his name just so I can make sure to not butcher it. But uh, Richie Grant. Mm-hmm. They said that he actually is the, the he was the he was the best safety out of all the safeties. A lot of people said that he was the best safety. So we got a skill. That's why we moved. We we fell back, but we kind of did that to get a better choice yeah. later on, which which led us to Jalen Mayfield, which I was listening to the radio, and they mentioned that Jalen Mayfield really was a BPA best player available, mm. like. That's why they picked him because they said that he was. Or I wasn't listening. To Ray, I was listening to another podcast, Talk of Hawks. Uh, so he was a top twenty-five. They could somebody considered him a top twenty-five player. And he just fell to the third round, uh, or yeah, to the third round at sixty-eight for us. So they knocked it out of the park. I also I told you about Frank Darby, right? The seventh round draft pick. Mm-hmm. Did you see his interview? Uh, yeah, I did. I saw it. I just want that kid to win. Yeah. Because he just had such amazing energy, which I think, I think that they say with Jalen Mayfield, he's that, gr- he's tough and gritty and nasty. <laughs> I think somebody said he was either him or, yeah, I think it was him that they were saying that I wouldn't be shocked if in the future he's, um, he's penalized for, um, for blocking too long. <laughs> Like blocking after the whistle because yeah. they said like he's that kind of nasty. so they're like he's bringing which in the trenches you need nasty you know I'm what gonna, I mean I'm gonna put up the uh, the draft picks actually since we're talking about them but um but yeah so um I completely agree with everything you're saying about um the picks and uh, I, I I do think that that they had a good draft I am still of the opinion <laughs> that. While I think Pitts is a good pick, I'm of the opinion that they could have still gotten Pitts had they traded back a little. Like, traded back even to, like, the eighth spot or whatever. You think they could have gotten Pitts at eight? Yes. Yes, because it didn't look like any of those other teams were in the market for for him. I could have been wrong. Maybe maybe they got intel that, hey, if if you don't keep this fourth spot, someone's going to get Pitts. Maybe they did. But I'm of the opinion that they could have gotten him at like number eight, because four is a really high pick for. So Titans. you don't think if we had traded back, the Cincinnati Bengals would have picked Kyle Pitts over Jamar Chase? No, I mean I don't. I mean I guess so. Like, but no, who do I they have? They because because we've been hearing about Jamar Chase going to Bengals for a while That's because, because Kyle Pitts of the, going to the Falcons. No, because of the LSU connection with uh, the okay. quarterback Joe Burrow. Um, so I don't know, man. I I feel like we could have gotten him, Laura. I'm glad we got him though because all the metrics suggest that he's going to be really good for a really long time. But um, other than that, yeah, I was I was I was pleased with the draft. You know, um, I think our initial reaction was one of shock. Uh, yeah, especially since you know, it had been like quarterback, quarterback, quarterback. Even though we kind of knew that, or at least we kind of suspected that they weren't going to go with quarterback. I knew they um, weren't going to go. With, it wasn't yeah. a suspect. I knew they weren't. I, I I say that in in hindsight, I'm a genius. But uh, honestly, yeah, with the Kyle Pitts pick, I wasn't feeling it at the very beginning. You guys heard me last week. But once I was able to mull over it, and once I was able to think about that. Arthur Smith, who to me is going to go down as a low key, I have a feeling he's going to show that he's a low key offensive genius because mm-hmm. he doesn't get that thrown at him as much as, you know, say like uh, Kyle Shanahan did. But I really do feel that 
Arthur Smith is going to show that he's a low key um, offensive genius. Mm-hmm. Him with Kyle Pitts, and if he has Julio Jones too, with Matt Ryan, Matt Ryan is not Tannehill is no Matt Ryan. Mm-hmm. Tannehill had a resurgence, and he yeah he got the he got the comeback player of the year award. Arthur Smith got him the comeback player of the year award. Yeah, true. And it was not because he got hurt. Well, I don't know if he got hurt, but it wasn't because he got hurt. It's because he sucked. Yeah. He got, he got, he brought him back from the land of suckiness. Yeah, that's true. You know, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it now. I, I took, it took me a little while to get to it, but I'm feeling it now. Also go back to, um, go back to, um, the one about, uh, for, for, um, the Nigerian name. I'm sure you know how to say it better than I do. Adeto Kumbu Ogundeji. Yeah, him. Yeah. He's that. I've, if you watch some of his highlights, that that kid is that that dude is a um, beast. He's a he's yeah he he can because a lot of people I think a lot of people forget is like you can get like generational players, maybe not generational players, but you get really really good players that end up totally like you can build around mm-hmm. in the later rounds. Grady Jarrett was drafted in the fifth round. Yeah, Grady Jarrett is our best our best defensive player. Um. And if he's not our best, he's definitely our most important. Yeah. And then with a guy like this guy who's an edge rusher, who hopefully isn't like, you know, isn't like Vic Beasley, who needs apparently needs a motivational speech every single time he goes on the field in order for him to be good. Thank you, Mike Freeney. Um, Dwight, is it Mike Freeney or Dwight Freeney? Dwight Freeney, right? Dwight Freeney, yeah. Yeah. You know, him, he's the reason why he got the, all the sacks because, you know, he was getting like, you can do it. And then apparently when you took that away from him, but then again, also you changed him. So you change them from one position. And the, the thing is, Dan Pease did say, these players are going to play the position that they're going to play. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, he's not going to try to do this whole Swiss army knife kind of thing that our, the last regime tried to do too much. You know you know what I mean? Like, not every player can be a Swiss army knife. Some of them are just a butcher knife, and that's all they're there for is to be a butcher knife. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, uh, if you guys are watching it on YouTube, there's a clip of uh, Frank Darby reacting to uh getting drafted this is the clip Zeus was talking about and the, the high energy you can see just from the from the uh um picture that he's like super excited uh i don't know maybe we'll link that uh in the in the comments or the description um yeah. but yeah yeah those are those are the draft picks for the falcons um i feel okay i feel okay about it i want to talk about some of the other teams um and who they drafted um i think uh, the top three were well, the top two were pretty much where we expected they would go as far as position, right? We knew Lawrence is going number one. Uh, Zach Wilson to Jets, uh, it could have been Wilson, it could have been Lance, it could have been Fields. They went with Wilson, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how that pans out. I was a little surprised about Lance to Niners, but apparently they really saw something they liked in there. It's when you go a little further out that then you start seeing some of the um unexpected moves i was really not expecting the panthers to not go quarterback um so i i am i'm yeah. curious to see what that does for them uh they must have really seen something in fields to not go for him or in this other guy whom, whose name is escaping me right now jason jc horn okay yeah to say that they're gonna go with him but for me i think one of the smartest picks and i mentioned it during our top five might have been the Patriots going for Mac Jones. Uh, I thought I thought that was a smart pick, and uh, that was a that was a pick that slipped to them because I guarantee you, if Justin Fields is slipped to them, they would have taken Justin Fields. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think Mac Jones is a smart pick. I, I think that's like a Belichick type player. I I, yeah. I want to see if they're able to regain their uh, NF, uh, AFC East dominance with that pick. But uh, yeah, uh, that's, wait, that's, you want the Belichick to be dominant? No, I, I don't necessarily want him to be dominant, but I want to see if, you know, it was just Brady magic for him or if he's able gotcha. to turn another quarterback into, like, his you know, model quarterback type thing. Um, yeah. So I, I, I am looking forward to that. Um, do you have anything else you want to touch on with regards to the draft? No, man, I can't. I can't think of anything. You know, uh, a lot, also one thing about drafts that is is you can be excited about them, 
but coaching matters. So, you know, if the right coaching isn't there, they can fizzle. Like there's a guy like, you know, freaking, um, uh, Patrick Sertan, uh, junior, you know, mm-hmm. freaking beast. Right. You never know in Denver. He might, I mean, Denver has a good defense all the time, but, but let's just say that he doesn't do anything. You know what I mean? It's coaching. So it depends on who the coaches are or, or, uh, stuff. So we got to be hopeful for the coaching, hopeful that, uh, the Falcons do what they're supposed to do. And then, um, I would say that September can't come here fast enough, but yes, it can because I'm in school right now, and I'm so I'm be so that means I'll be done with my first semester. It can wait because yeah. this semester it's already brutal, and it's only yeah. one weekend. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Um...